So, okay, quick recap here. We got child process spawning working. One child is spawning another one. And now we got it where the child process is going to connect to the parent. And we established that connection. And now the parent can start telling the child what to do because that's the, that's the chain of command. So we want to do something like a like a remote procedure call here where one procedure is going to want to try to send a message to another one that's going to cause some code on the other one to be executed. So we'll call those our commands and we're going to we're going to make a command here. struct move command. Now the command is very simple. It's just going to cause a sprite to move from point A to point B. So let's include vec2f from the spatial sub library, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll go spa vec2f start and end. And then server is going to have to have a, a little funky wonky that's for sending the command. Now the client is going to need one to receive a command, but it, I mean, it could be the case that the server sends a bunch of commands at once, so there might be a ton of them. So you should. It'd be nice to receive them all in like a single batch. So we will make a function on the client called receive commands vector return std vector of move command. All right, huge. Now, here's the fun part. We actually got to implement this stuff. Here's where it gets interesting. Send command. Okay, want to override that. Okay, so how do we send this bad boy? Well, I mean, we probably want to send it in binary fashion, all the bytes. And this should not be too difficult to serialize because it's a very simple, flat kind of data structure. There's no indirection, there's no nothing on the heap. So in that case, we want to do socket dot send. Let me see what I got here. We can just send like a buffer. So as buffer. And then we need, I think for buffer, we can give it a pointer to bytes and then how many bytes. So let's do reinterpret cast const car pointer to the address of the command. And then we want size of CMD. So far, not angry. I mean, that should be it, right? I don't think I've missed anything. Now things are going to be a little more interesting for receive commands, let me tell you, because we can't really let the client block because it's got to it's got to keep updating. It's got to keep drawing stuff on the screen. It can't block. So what do we need? Well, first off, let's create a uh, std vector of move command. And we'll just call this one received commands. Put these bad boys in a little vector here. And here's what we want to do because we want to be receiving these things kind of like as we are also drawing frames to the screen. We want a coroutine routine on this side. So auto receiver strand. So we're going to make this one a coroutine. routine. It's going to be returning an awaitable. What do we do in this awaitable? Well, here we're just going to receive commands, put them in the received commands vector. That's what this coroutine does. So, co await async read, read from the socket. We got to read into some memory. So, we're going to read into the memory of a command. So, we got move command cmd. We'll just zero that out so the compiler doesn't complain that we're using uninitialized stuff. And then as buffer. Wait a minute, do I not need to? I'm just trying to think here. Do I not need to reinterpret cast this to car? Size of... Maybe I don't need to do that. And of course, the secret size, you got to tell it to use a weightable. So that turns this into a coroutine that we can co-await. Uh, so we get a command and then we got to push that back into our vector. And of course, we want to do this basically forever. As long as they got commands, we want them. We'll put them into our receive commands. Now, what does the receive commands function actually do? Because it's, as you can see, the receiving is happening here. Well, this is how you get them out of that vector. So we do like return std move received commands. Only that's not quite true because I want to run the client using only a single thread. 
So if we want ACL to actually execute this coroutine, that single thread is going to have to call IO context.run and it's going to block there forever because the, the coroutine never finishes. We don't want that. What we actually want to do is basically every frame, we want to run the IO context for a while to get any messages and then stop running it and go back into another frame. So when, when we want to receive commands, that's where we're going to run the IO context to, to run the coroutines to get whatever we want. So we're going to do IOCTX underscore dot run run four and we'll say you can run this one for like a maximum of one millisecond but then stop and then get out of here because you know you got other work to do you can't be you can't be just sitting around on that io context forever all right that's juicy now we should be able to use this let's do just a little quick test so in the main after we connect let's send a command so we want to spawn a sprite that's going to go from 100 100 to negative 100 it's a little diagonal boy that was very easy now it's not going to be so easy on the, the other side because obviously this guy actually has to do do the job it's very easy to give the orders it's a little, a little more difficult to do the actual job so we got to get rid of a bunch of stuff here move sprite 2 is going to be useful obviously um but i mean the serpentine the triangulate eh don't think we'll be yeah don't think we'll be doing that right now behavior no thank you all right, now down here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to be looping, going to be doing behaviors, but we're also going to be receiving commands. And we might have multiple behaviors going on at once. So every time someone sends us a command, we're going to have to like spawn a sprite and then move it, move it to its destination. So we'll call that, we're going to call that concept an operation for now we might refine it later but I mean it's not really the point of this so this should be perfectly sufficient now the question is what data obviously we're gonna need a sprite we're also going to need to hold the coroutine that is you know managing the overall animation of this sprite we can't just do like a for loop on the coroutine like this because we got multiple coroutines that we got to do every frame so I mean I think I think we're gonna need the recursive generator of the coroutine. But I think we're also going to need an iterator to track, you know, where we are along the coroutine in progress. So that would be recursive generator int iterator. Let's call that IT. So maybe this is sufficient. I don't know. We'll see. So take in a move command and it will create a move sprite to command end uh, we're gonna have to create the sprite you know, set the iterator to be the begin of this coroutine uh, now we got the command end but the command start the sprite should be basically spawned where the start is now I don't think sprite has a constructor to do that so let us implement it's not really that complicated. We just give the option to give a different starting position. And in here we can do command dot start is the starting position of the sprite. Okay, so there's how we create an operation. Now we want to update the operation. And it's basically just, you know, iteration, right? So iterator is not equal to coro end. We're not at the end. We're going to increment. And that should cause the body of the coroutine to execute once which might, you know, move the sprite around or whatever. We need a dot there. And then once we have executed the coroutine, the animation routine, call update on the sprite to actually update its position, you know, based on its velocity, which was set by the coroutine. And when we want to draw the sprite that's associated with this operation, we just call sprite.draw. So there's a nice basic encapsulation of an operation that's been sent over from the, uh, the parent process. All right, so now we don't got like a single sprite. We got one sprite per operation. We can have multiple operations. So let's get ourselves a vector. And then we're gonna loop until it's time to close off. We'll check for the is closing from the window in the simple graphics layer. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna receive any commands that we might have. Receive commands. We're gonna create an operation. And then we're gonna update all the operations. Then we begin a frame. 
We draw all the operations, all the sprites in those operations, and then we end the frame. And I think it's that simple. And so now when we run, it's just hard coded that the, the parents should send a single command to the child and it will, you know, have one operation that runs to completion. Okay, we did not get any kind of behavior going on there. Uh, that is disappointing. Okay, so what went wrong? Oh, send command is being called here. Let's look here. Receive commands. Ostensibly this is being called, yeah? I think we ever hit this one here? Could give it a shot. So it does not ever receive a command. It's a little bit of a problem. We are running the... I okay. Okay. I see it. Your boy sees it. So we create this coroutine. We never actually set it running on the IO context. Classic. So we got to spawn the coroutine. Co-spawn IOCTX receiver strand. And we'll just run this one detached. Probably want to run that again without the breakpoint. And we see the boy moving. Your boy is moving. Frog. All right. That's another commit. 